When it comes to managing diabetes, choosing the right medication is crucial for maintaining optimal blood sugar levels and reducing the risk of complications. In this video, we'll explore talk about the worst medications for diabetics based on scientific studies. But before we continue, if you appreciate all the information and the research that goes into making a video like this, it does help out tremendously if you hit the like button or hit subscribe. Thank you, and let's begin. We'll start with the best medication and work our way down to the worst one, so you can make informed decisions about your diabetes management. According to numerous studies, metformin has been considered the best first-line medication for people with type 2 diabetes. Metformin, which belongs to the biguanide class of medications, works by decreasing glucose production in the liver and increasing insulin sensitivity. A landmark study called the United Kingdom Prospective Diabetes Study found that metformin significantly reduced the risk of diabetes-related complications, including heart attack, stroke, and death. Other studies have also shown that metformin is associated with fewer side effects compared to other diabetes medications, making it a popular choice among healthcare professionals and patients alike. Another medication that has proven to be effective in managing diabetes is the sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors. These medications, which include dapagliflozin, empagliflozin, and canagliflozin, work by promoting the excretion of excess glucose through the urine. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine found that empagliflozin in particular significantly reduced the risk of cardiovascular events and death in people with type 2 diabetes. Other studies have also shown that SGLT2 inhibitors can help in weight loss and blood pressure reduction, making them a valuable option for diabetics with coexisting health issues. Another class of medications worth mentioning is glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonists. These injectable medications such as liraglutide, exenatide, and dulaglutide mimic the effects of a hormone called GLP-1, which increases insulin secretion and slows down stomach emptying. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that liraglutide significantly improved blood sugar control and reduced the risk of hypoglycemia, a common side effect of many diabetes medications. Additionally, GLP-1 receptor agonists have been shown to promote weight loss, making them a suitable option for diabetics struggling with obesity. While these medications are generally considered effective and safe, there are some diabetes medications that have been associated with increased risks or limited benefits. One such medication is the thiazolidinidione class, which includes drugs like pioglitazone and rosiglitazone. These medications work by increasing insulin sensitivity in the body, but they have been linked to various safety concerns. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that rosiglitazone was associated with an increased risk of heart attack and heart failure, leading to its restricted use in many countries. Moreover, sulfonylureas, a class of medications that includes glimperide, glyburide, and glipizide, have also been associated with several drawbacks. These medications work by stimulating the pancreas to release more insulin, which can help lower blood sugar levels. However, a study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine found that sulfonylureas were associated with an increased risk of hypoglycemia, particularly in older adults. Furthermore, these medications have not been shown to have significant benefits in terms of reducing diabetes-related complications, making them a less preferable option compared to metformin, SGLT2 inhibitors, and GLP-1 receptor agonists. Lastly, let's discuss the worst medication for diabetics, which is none other than the notorious drug called glyburide. This medication, which belongs to the sulfonylurea class, has been associated with the highest risk of hypoglycemia among all diabetes medications. Hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar, can be a dangerous and potentially life-threatening condition, especially for older adults or those with other health complications. A study published in JAMA Internal Medicine found that glyburide was associated with a significantly higher risk of hypoglycemia compared to other sulfonylureas and non-sulfonylurea medications. In this study, the researchers analyzed data from over 1.3 million people with type 2 diabetes and found that the use of glyburide was linked to a 68% increased risk of hypoglycemia-related hospitalizations compared to other diabetes medications. In addition to the increased risk of hypoglycemia, glyburide has also been found to be less effective in controlling blood sugar levels compared to other diabetes medications. A study published in Diabetes Care compared the effectiveness of glyburide, glipizide, and glimperide, 
and found that glyburide was the least effective among the three sulfonylureas in lowering HbA1c levels, a key indicator of blood sugar control. Furthermore, glyburide has not been shown to provide any significant benefits in terms of reducing the risk of diabetes-related complications. A study published in the New England Journal of Medicine found that glyburide was not associated with a reduced risk of macrovascular complications, such as heart attack and stroke, compared to other diabetes medications. In light of these studies, it's clear that glyburide is the worst medication for diabetics due to its increased risk of hypoglycemia and limited benefits in terms of blood sugar control and reducing diabetes-related complications. As a result, many healthcare professionals and guidelines now recommend avoiding the use of glyburide, particularly in older adults or those at a higher risk of hypoglycemia. What are alternative treatments for diabetes? Maintaining blood sugar levels is part of managing diabetes. Doctors often prescribe traditional treatments, like insulin injections to keep blood sugar levels normal. Some people with diabetes also use complementary and alternative therapies. These therapies aim to treat the body and the mind. Alternative treatments for diabetes include herbs, supplements, diet, exercise, relaxation techniques, diet and exercise. Most of us don't think of diet and exercise as alternative medicine, but they do fall under this category. Diet and exercise are important in treating diabetes. What you eat and how active you are impacts your blood sugar level and health. Having a healthy diet and staying active have a positive impact on diabetes. Having an exercise regimen is a standard recommendation for people with diabetes. The American Diabetes Association recommends doing resistance exercises twice per week for people without activity restrictions. Examples could be lifting free weights or using resistance bands. Those with type 2 diabetes should also aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate to intense aerobic activity every week. Herbs and supplements. Herbs and supplements are popular CAM therapies for people with diabetes. But the U.S. Food and Drug Administration doesn't consider these therapies medicines. They aren't regulated. There are also no definitive studies that support treating diabetes with supplements. Most support for these substances comes by word of mouth. Always speak with your doctor before you start taking any new supplements. Some supplements can interact with the medications you're taking. In conclusion, when it comes to managing diabetes, choosing the right medication is essential for achieving optimal blood sugar control and reducing the risk of complications. While medications like metformin, SGLT2 inhibitors, and GLP-1 receptor agonists have proven to be effective and safe options for most diabetics, it's important to be aware of the potential risks associated with other medications, such as glyburide, the worst medication for diabetics. Remember, effective diabetes management also involves lifestyle changes, such as maintaining a healthy diet, exercising regularly, and monitoring blood sugar levels. Thank you for watching today's video. Please like, share, and subscribe for more informative content about diabetes and nutrition. Stay healthy and take care.